Hi guys, it's Tara from Sojourn. So lately I've been thinking a lot about personality, personality traits, types, tests, all these things. Earlier in my career I did a lot more work with personality and it was really fun to check out the different tests and to talk with people about how their personality um, impacts the people around them, impacts themselves. It's our way of being in the world around us. It's one psychological theory uh, to really dive in to connect with people and help make sense of their world. Um, during the pandemic, a word that I have been thinking about a lot is, I don't think you'll guess it if I give you time. If you want to take a guess, hold it in your mind, I bet you'll be wrong. I've been thinking a lot about the word neuroticism. <laughs> Did you guess that one? Uh, so I've been thinking a lot about neurotic characters on TV, in films, and just that sort of quirkiness of what we would notice as neuroticism and thinking, boy, in lockdown, a lot of our quirks are showing up. And when I think of neuroticism, I, I actually am thinking of a personality model called the Big Five Traits, one of which is neuroticism. And I decided to look at it and I thought, hey, why don't we just review it here because it is really interesting. So there's five categories or traits and within each trait, a person either scores high or low. And it's just interesting to notice and to think about, boy, am I high or low in this one? We'll have all five of the traits in some sort of combination. So the first trait is openness. Now I might refer to my notes from time to time just to make sure I'm getting it right. Now openness, uh, people with this trait who are high are very creative, uh, they like change, they like adventure, they want to try new things, they like to take a plunge into challenges, they like to think in the abstract, they like to philosophy and all of that creative brain power uh, is a very open personality trait. Someone who would register more low in openness doesn't really like change, um, they want things concrete, they don't like abstract, resistant of new ideas, um, and not very imaginative. So you can sort of notice for yourself, am I lower or higher in this openness category? The second category is conscientiousness. Um, so a person who's high in conscientiousness spends time preparing, finishes important tasks right away, has a lot of attention to detail, and enjoys having a set schedule. Um, somebody who is low in conscientiousness, dislikes structure, they make messes, fails to return things or put them back where they belong, procrastination, fails to complete necessary or assigned tasks. And you can notice, am I more conscientious when I schedule, um, register more high on this one or more low? And then extroversion. Now, people talk a lot about introversion versus extroversion, and I think this category is very interesting because I think it makes it really confusing to figure out if you're introverted or extroverted if you actually look at the model of what those two categories look like. Most of us are a combination of the two. So somebody who is highly extroverted enjoys being the center of attention, likes to start conversations, enjoys meeting new people, has a wide social circle of friends and acquaintances, uh, has an easy time or finds it easy to make new friends, feels energized when around people, says things before thinking about them. <laughs> uh, and when I read this, every category, I'm like, oh, there's a time or two that I'm that person. Sometimes I speak without thinking. Anybody else? Um, somebody who would reg register low in extroversion, so this would be somebody who's more introverted, prefers solitude, feels exhausted when having to socialize. Now, all of us have some exhaustion about social situations right now in COVID, so that's a really great example of how it's confusing to really pin ourselves down into any one category. Finds it difficult to start conversation, dislikes making small talk, carefully thinks things through before speaking, dislikes being the center of attention. So again, you can register for yourself. Am I more extroverted or introverted? What parts of each category do I have? And how does that play out? Um, the more we notice ourselves being combined in any one of these traits, that evokes anxiety. So if I'm a big mix of extroversion and introversion, it's gonna bring up some anxiety for me because I like them both. And I don't like them both. 
So I have multiple strategies. Multiple strategies in each trait is gonna increase our anxiety about that portion of our personality. Agreeableness. So a person who is highly agreeable, has a great deal of interest in other people, cares about others, feels empathy and concern for other people, enjoys helping, um, assisting others who are in need of help. So this is just that real caregiver, compassionate strength. Somebody who is low in agreeableness, takes little interest in others, doesn't care about how other people feel, has little interest in other people's problems, insults, or belittles, and is manipulative. Again, this is really interesting to consider. So the low score in agreeableness sounds quite unlikable and might not be true for us all the time, but maybe in times of distress or when we're just not feeling good about ourselves, we're angry, uh, we're hangry, <laughs> we're going through difficulty, a global pandemic perhaps, our agreeableness can be less. We're talking about politics, we're talking about vaccinations, we're talking about masks, we could be unagreeable. The final one, neuroticism. This is what got me started on this topic to begin with. So neuroticism, somebody who is highly neurotic, experiences a lot of stress, worries about many different things, gets upset easily, has dramatic shifts in moods, feels anxious more readily, struggles to bounce back after stressful events. And again, this is the type of uh, mental psychological distress that we oftentimes see characterized in films and television. Uh, to show somebody who is struggling to cope in the world around them. Somebody who is low in neuroticism, emotionally stable, deals with stress well, rarely feels sad or depressed, doesn't worry much. <laughs> That's a funny thing to say, doesn't worry much, and is very relaxed. Now, I think, again, here's a great example of how everything is a mixed bag. Somebody who is really low in neuroticism, rarely feel sad or depressed. I mean, that's quite a strange thing to notice because if we're doing really well, actually, we should have times of real deep sadness and distress, depression, um, because it's not all sunshine and roses out there. This is a great evaluation to say, hey, these categories, we want some fluidity. You don't wanna be locked into all high or all low you want to see that you kind of fit in both the high and the low at certain instances. And again, because we're a combination of all of these things, it just evokes some anxiety because we're hard to figure out. People are complex. We have all sorts of stories that have brought us to this point in our life, life experiences, things that are built into the DNA of who we are. And of course, our attachments and our relationships, all of these things impact our personality and how we connect to the world around us. Okay, you guys, I hope you found this interesting. If you have any comments or questions, please drop them below. Bye for today. See ya.